No, no questions. Okay, fantastic. So let me bring in Dennis here, and I think this is where um, this is where we will begin to see uh, some of the things that um, Obolade is saying, um, because uh, Dennis will basically present to us. Uh, the the value uh, presentation from Seviant, um, and I think that we'll, we sh we will be able to see how we can. I mean, so the the average treasurer that is looking to uh, integrate and implement automation will actually see in the presentation how they can go ahead to do that. Dennis, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, Mobilati, um, thank you. That was a very fascinating insight on how First Bank are approaching corporate treasury. And um, obviously as well, Mr. Ogunubi, being in CFAO of a global company, um, you've been fortunate enough to invest probably in a very expensive uh, <laughs> uh, solution. But I think there's two things that, that I wanted to pull out from this, um, which you both, you both alluded to before I really sort of dive into this. Number one, there's definitely a significant investment required in, in corporate treasury platforms. And you have two options. You can either go and buy it off the shelf, go and invest in that software, or you can approach the software as a service um, approach, which you mentioned to earlier, which is really what Seaviant's built on. And if I had to summarize what Seaviant's trying to do, I would say we're trying to democratize treasury. We believe that everybody should have the opportunity to leverage the latest technology available but you shouldn't have to make a huge financial investment to enjoy that. You can, you can, you can adopt a subscription-based service that will allow you to have you know, that latest, that latest um, foresight. And really, when you look at the, sort of the financial, the fintech platforms, where their investment goes is basically in building these systems and solutions that anybody can use. So if I look at um, you know, who, who, who Seaving is, sorry, I can't really see this one. Uh, here we go. Okay. Thank you. So we're a UK-based uh, UK financial technology company. Um, and as I said, we've built treasury and trade solutions that include cash management, cross-border payments. We also have something called escrow, which we think is a very exciting technology. And I think it will definitely play to help corporates here in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa and working capital across a really diverse and sort of client base. So we, we look to basically provide treasury solutions to any, any, any vertical and really any, any, any size of business. Um, and you know, as, as you alluded to earlier, managing corporate treasury is extremely complex. Um, if I take a step back, I remember us when we actually came up with the idea of Seaven, and you've mentioned it both twice. It wasn't in 2004 though, it was probably a little bit later. But we noticed um, when we were running a previous company, I had four bank accounts. And each time I had to log in, I had to download an Excel sheet, and then I had to uh, consolidate all of those in into one sheet, and then pass it back to my, my account department. And this was as late as 2016. And it was highly, highly inefficient. And at the same time, it wasn't real time. So we were always 24 to 48 hours outside what we, what we needed to know. And the other thing that we all realized is Cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. And if you don't have a really good view on your cash flow, you can slip or you can miss things. So then we started thinking, well, why can't we provide that centralized interface that allows you, exactly as you said, to bring the data to me? So I don't have to, I don't have, to have one person just downloading spreadsheets. That, to me, that didn't make sense. It's not, it's not effective. That person could be reorientated to do things which are far more productive for the business. So uh, that's really where we started thinking. And then we realized that the treasury solution or treasury functions, um, they touch on many, many parts of your organization. As you said before, it requires, it requires compliance. It requires, um, it requires uh, data management. It requires technology. It requires sales. It requires business. So when you look at treasury or the treasury department, it's extremely critical to any organization. And it gives you that 360 view 
especially from your from from your finance. And if you can go away from if you can go away from being pulled away from those manual processes, and then it really allows your senior managers to think strategically. And I think that's really where the value of the business comes. I should not have to be downloading spreadsheets and putting them to Excel. I should be spending my time in analyzing my data and seeing how I can best put that cash to use in my company. Um, if I don't do that, then I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm playing catch up. And for me, that that doesn't um, that doesn't really work. It doesn't make you more, more more efficient. So, as I said, when you when you look at the some of the challenges or what automation definitely helps. It definitely helps you to get rid of those inaccuracies around where your cash flows and where your liquidity is. Limited visibility into accounts payable and accounts receivable, which we touched on, is extremely important. And definitely being able to predict where your cash is and how it will be available um, can definitely hinder you as an organization. You also have a high risk of cash shortfall or actually cash excess, excess cash. You may have those windfalls when you have a pooled money that's actually not sitting there and actually making you money. You can't invest it because you're not aware it's there. So the ability for you to have that, that 360 view around where your cash is is extremely important. I think fraud's a huge, a, a, a huge part as well. A lot of requirements around security. And if you, don't have, if you have a lack of visibility in your cash transactions and you have manual processes, you can... You can you know, it's very easy for you to mismonitor what should be coming in. I mean, we've heard of countless stories of people giving dummy bank accounts, for example, uh, and cash going out, you know, to, to, to third-party accounts, and you won't even know that's existing. Um, and if you have a mismatch between your bank and your ERP, you know, things can slip through the gap. A very, very important part as well is compliance, um, making sure that you're compliant. You know, as, um, you know, um, Bob Aladdy mentioned, you know, if you're multi multi-jurisdiction, multi-regulatory re countries, how you, ha how you offer and how you, how you adopt compliance is very, very important. So one of the things that we decided when we sat at Sevin is, is that we need to understand or think how a treasurer thinks. And when you look at, for example, just initiation and approval roles in, uh, in any business, typically you can have multiple signature sign-off. Um, if you look at a bank account today, if, if, if I'm in a treasury department, and I say to someone, okay, you have visibility access only, but you can't transact. They can still see everything in that account. They can see payroll, they can see where the payments are going, where the payments are coming. So what we did as a, you know, as organization, he said, we, we need to make it as granular as possible. Because one of the things that a treasury management function will have to do is it will have to match and meet the business processes of that organization. So for example, one of the things that we've said is you can, you can give access to a junior account officer only to view a specific account or a specific type of transaction. Or you can be the CFO and you can have you know, the bird's eye view over, over everything that you want to do. But that granularity around compliance, when you actually dial it back from a technology point of view, when you look at a business, the business processes, that automation, you can't take a technology and try and push it into a business. You must, your technology must match the needs or the business requirements, hence we have BRDs, right, of how my technology is going to help my process. So that, that, that requirement around, around um, sort of compliance, the view access, the transaction access, who can see what, how those rules can be implemented are extremely important as well. Um, because if not, you, you, you end up in a situation where your, your, um, your treasury department is trying to basically in invest or put their time into, into a business function that doesn't work for them. Um, integrating data from multiple sources, we, we, we all spoke about that. Um, as you say, really, we, we see there's three, actually four types of integration. You have host to host, um, you have Swift, uh, you then also have the Holy Grail, which is API. Um, and then as well, you can also have FTP, where people will send you know, T, T plus one, T plus two, and then you just pull that from an FTP server. Um, reconciling cash balances. Um, one of the things that we've that we've you know we've built our platform really as an API, an API driven technology. And one of the things that's always fascinated me is why should account departments be chasing receivables or not knowing when someone has made a payment and it's come into my account and my service hasn't been delivered or turned on. And that can be for a number of reasons. It can be the wrong reference number. It can be, you know, I can see Mobile Addy smiling here. It can be, it can be, you know, maybe the beneficiary's name spelled incorrectly. You know, my name is often, you know, Ibrahim as opposed to O'Brien. <laughs> so, you know, 
you, you have those syncrasies and then you're chasing your tail trying to reconcile this payment, you have an angry customer. So what we've, what, we've, what we've tried to do is we've tried to remove that headache and automate it as much as possible. Monitoring multiple bank accounts is extremely important and that requires you integrating your API into, into as many banks or you know, the banks that your customers want you to. So you start creating that platform. And I think it's, you know, the way you put it was very pertinent. Your data should come to you. You shouldn't have to go to your data. Um, you know, that's what technology gives you. And then, obviously, detecting unauthorized transactions. You know, we, 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 we live in a, you know, in a world where people will always try and circumvent systems. So having those rules and processes in place, technology allows you to eliminate a lot of potential leakages. Um, and then, obviously, forecasting your cash flow efficiently. I think that's very, very important. Um, as I mentioned before, if you, if you don't have a, a good handle on where your cash is, you can't really, be, you can't really, really be effective. Oops, sorry, I keep jumping slides here. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, what we try to do at Sevian, obviously as I said, is we help you supervise your cash flow. We also help simplify cross-border payments for our international clients. As you said, we're UK based as well. We've also spent a lot of time integrating into Swift. Um, so we're very happy and proud to announce that we, we also use Swift GPI as well. Um, and we think it's very important for you to be able to trash, uh, tra to be able to transact and see your transaction on a step-by-step -step flow and step in real time. One of the biggest um, challenges that I've seen corporates, not just in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, but potentially in other parts of the world, is I'm sure you will have seen this. Where's my telex? Where is my telex? And once again, we said, well, technology can take care of that. <coughs> the moment a transaction occurs or it's, it's hit the SWIFT network, we automate and send that email. And it gives you the option to send it to your counterparty and or just to yourself to say, here's the payment, it's gone. And as, you know, for, for, for people who, who, who mostly don't understand the SWIFT network so much, SWIFT is actually a messaging network. It doesn't actually carry the transaction. It just is a huge messaging network between banks globally that basically says, you know, is messaging, here's, here's the flow and here's the transaction. And the banks then arrange themselves. So really it's like a postal service. And you know, the, as exactly as you alluded to before, you know, nowadays you can track parcels online in real time. And Swift is now allowing you to do that. Um, you also mentioned Swift Corporate um, as well. That gives you the ability to leverage um, Swift uh, to basically see where your transactions are and obviously see where your balances are. When you look at global treasury companies, the big players that claim, or I shouldn't say claim, they know they have connectivity to 10,000 banks or 15,000 banks or 1,000 banks, it's really leveraging the SWIFT network. It's not API because when you, when, you, when you have to develop an API solution and you implement to a bank, and Mobile Addy will be aware of this, it takes quite a lot of time. You have a lot of testing. Um, you know, it's a significant investment for you to have that API connectivity. But once you've done that, the the business efficiency and savings you get are really unparalleled. Um, and, uh, and for us, that's, that's a very important play for any, for any corporate. As you said, keeping track of your bank accounts, we've, we've built a centralized interface. Um, and you when, when you come onto the Sevian system, it gives you the opportunity to see everything in one place from multiple banks as well. And I think this is a very important point for us to make. Us as a, as a, as a, as a software and a fintech company, we're not a competitor of First Bank. We don't compete with First Direct. We really, we're partners. And the reason I say that is, if I look at CFA now and I ask you how many bank accounts you have in Nigeria, you probably have more than one. And First Bank can provide a fantastic service for First Bank. But what, what, what do you do when you have Bank A, Bank B, Bank C, Bank D, Bank E? You either go and build and buy your own treasury platform, and then you have to go and integrate it. Or you come to someone who's done the heavy lifting or is doing the heavy lifting like ourselves to say, I have that connectivity into A, B, C, D, E. And the other way I look at it, when I, when I talk to banks, I say my goal or Sevian's ambition for a bank is to push transactions. If I have a highly efficient platform that helps my customer and, and the bank's customer being able to reconcile, send payments, receive payments, get all their data in one place at one time efficiently, I know that they'll use my service or our service more and more. And ultimately, when you look at, when you look at um, transaction banking today in banks, it's probably strategically for me, you know, top one or top two most important um, parts of the ecosystem. 
I think just breaking out slightly from the, from the presentation, if you look at what's happened in Nigeria, um, when we implemented NIP and NIBS went live on, on instant payments, that happened probably, what, eight, maybe ten years ago? I, I get a little bit lost, but it's, you know, it's a little while ago. But that happened before the United Kingdom, before the US. And there was a huge push into retail and payments. And if you look at the fintech sort of business ecosystem in Nigeria today, a lot of it is retail based. And just prior to us starting this webinar, I was talking to Mobile Edit about this. And we said, well, what's happened to the corporates? Who is building the solutions for the corporates in this fintech platform? And that's exactly what we were discussing. And, and I don't want to use the illusion that corporates have been left behind, but if I'm running a business, whether I'm an SME or I'm a mid-sized company, my needs from the bank are different from a retail customer. Bulk transactions, the way my data is displayed, am I connected to SWIFT? So it's a completely different, it's a completely different mentality and ecosystem. But when you go and talk potentially to, say, the bankers or, or the corporate bankers who are facing their corporates, what they see is, as you said, internet banking doesn't cut it for them anymore. So partnering with banks is extremely important, not just for the corporate, but also for the, for, for the system, the system um, in general. We've got businesses in multiple vertical markets. Uh, as I said, it's, 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 it's very cross, we're very cross vertical. Um, and obviously we've, we've, we've connected to a number of banks. I'm also happy to say that we've been speaking to First Bank, but uh, I haven't actually had the opportunity to come and pitch to you. Maybe I should do it live on this webinar. But you know, hopefully we'll have, we'll, have, we'll have First Bank up there as well, which we think is um, you know, critical for us. Um, I'll just give you two examples on, 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 on where I see, if I was to zone in on, on technology, um, I think virtual accounts are, are, are a game changer, um, especially here. And just very quickly, the difference between a virtual account and a sub-account. A sub-account's pretty much tied, think of an account within an account, but it has its own ledger, it has its own balance. It's really an account on its own right. Whereas a virtual account is almost like a unique reference number attached to a settlement account or a main bank account. So if I was to give you a real life example on how virtual accounts can, can help businesses. If I'm a, say I'm a pharmacy chain and I have 30, 30, 30 branches, I've got two options. I can have 30 bank accounts, I can have one bank account with 30 sub accounts, or I can have one bank account with 30 virtual account numbers. And those virtual account numbers, think of them as like tags. And you can, you can assign them to particular functions in a business or into a subsidiary or into a branch, or you can even put it against a product or a customer. So as those payments are coming in, Whilst the money is actually going to the master account, it actually allows you to file and tag what that transaction relates to. And it's extremely efficient. Another example I'll give you of how this is being used is um, there's a solar power company in northern Nigeria. And they have about 4,000 customers. Um, and as we know, we have very much a cash-based economy in northern Nigeria. So when you walk into a bank branch and you pay your 2,000 naira, and it's a manual process and a teller's uploading it, names get misspelled, account numbers get wrong, and you get very irate customers very quickly. But if you're reconciling 4,000 individual unique people paying cash, very quickly that can become a problem. So one of the ways that Stephen was looking to, to help, help with that solution is, he said, well, you, you assign a unique virtual account to each customer. So it's almost like his bank account. He said, you walk into the branch, and all you do is you put that number in. You don't need to put your name, you don't need to put your shop number, you don't need to put anything else. Our system will automatically reconcile that that belongs to customer A and will automatically update your billing platform. So when you come to your mismatches, what you're finding is you know, out of your 3,000 customers, hopefully 100 are wrong as opposed to 2,000 being incorrect. So the flexibility is definitely there. As I said, we think virtual, account, it, virtual accounting is, 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 is very, very important. Um, and it's one of those quick wins that you can, that you can adopt uh, in, in, in this market. Treasury is continuing to evolve. We mentioned blockchain, blockchain was mentioned, machine to machine learning was mentioned, AI was mentioned. All of these are, are cutting edge technologies, but that requires time and investment. And if you're, if you're, if you're a businessman um, and you are trading, then really what, you, what, what you're looking for is you're looking for a solution that takes away that, you know, takes away that headache of understanding the technology in that granular detail. 
what you need to be able to identify is how will I make my business more efficient and how I'll become more cost effective. And I think at Sevian, that's really what we're what we're what we're there to do. We're the, as you said, a, we're a software as a service company, um, and what we try and do is, when we speak to a customer, we really want to identify your problem first. What we don't want to do is come and try and you know sell you a solution that's not going to meet your needs. And I think you know when you, as I said, finally, when you, when you look back on, as you said, when you're when you're a multinational global corporate and you can afford two, three million, five million, whatever it is on, you know, that you're in a very fortunate position. But if you're a company with a turnover of 50 million or 100 million Naira, I want to give you the same tools that CFAO enjoy, <laughs> because I think that's very, very important. Not, not, not just from our point of view as a business, but also for the economy, for Nigeria and for Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole. We are in a unique position where we can leapfrog legacy technology, and we can do it at a fraction of the price. Um, and, and really, I think, as I said, Sevian is set up to democratize treasury for any corporate in this part of the world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dennis. I almost gave you a round of applause. <laughs>